Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? I'll try this side of the street. Usually I make the videos on that side of the street. So I'll see what the lighting is like on this side of the street. So anyway, I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm at Carlsbad Village Drive and State Street in Carlsbad, California. I'm standing right along uh, State Street. It's a really nice little area. Um, a lot of people come here on vacation, but it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. If you ever get a chance to come here, look me up and enjoy Carlsbad because it's really, really, really nice. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about um, EOS Authority, Roshan, uh, emailed me today, actually he's been emailing me, and I'm going to have him on the channel, and when I, I do, I'll let you know about it, and uh, we'll run a chat, oh, oh, maybe a live chat, so people can ask him questions, because I don't really talk about wallets much, um, because I don't want to get involved with wallets, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the internet about wallets, and I'm not really the one to talk to about that, because I don't usually deal with a number of wallets. I deal with uh, just a few wallets, but I'm familiar with those and the others I'm not, so I don't really want to talk about it. But anyway, Roshan emailed me, EOS Authority and EOS London, uh, block producer candidate, and he's telling me that only 33% of the people have registered tokens. So that means we got a lot of work to do in the next two weeks. Um, I know that Binance is supporting uh, the token. So if you have you have your coins on Binance, that Binance is just going to automatically um, register them with the EOS, so that's not an issue. But as far as the other token, I think Exodus has a, has a way of doing it. But the, the other, um, I'm not sure. And if you don't uh, do it through a, um, an exchange, there's uh, other things you got to do. So I might have Roshan on. Hopefully I can. Maybe we can coordinate and he can talk about how to do this because there's a lot of people that need to uh, register tokens yet and also you need to be voting so because when the mainnet launches you want to be there so you can decide who the block producers are and you want to get the airdrops so all that's important stuff and we need to talk about it I haven't really talked about it much but I need to get somebody on that really knows their stuff so hopefully us London Roshan can come on we can run a chat at the same time so uh, we can have people ask questions and some of the stuff can get worked out because it is important just like uh, U.S. Nation, uh, Stefan told us the other day that uh, if you don't register the tokens after a certain point, they become worthless or you lose your money. And that would be a shame considering all the stuff going on and considering the potential, uh, you know, the financial future of EOS and airdrops and the multitude of things going on. But I think is uh, really exciting because we're coming down to the last days of the tokens and raising money. So this is uh, definitely exciting times, and I think that the next two weeks is going to be really exciting. Uh, and after that, I think there's going to be a ton of announcements. I mean, obviously, EOS has done everything by the book as far as this uh, registering the tokens or uh, as uh, the ICO, the uh, token offering. So they're not going to screw it up here in the last two weeks by doing some some announcements or you know overpromising or something like that. The disclosures have been very careful. They've been very careful with the way I've done this. And I think as an ex-broker, ex-stock broker, someone that was involved with uh, brokerages, um, I think they've done a marvelous job. And I think they've done everything right. I mean, if I see it, I kind of step back from this and go, wow, these guys really knew what they were doing. Uh, and that's one of my interests in EOS because they do have some really good ideas. They have some really good planning, some really good foundations. Not to mention, they got a guy that was sitting there talking to Satoshi clear back in the day. I mean, Satoshi, I mean, this. I would like to make a video sometime on, sometime on Satoshi. That is one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard. You know, right at the time when banks are going too big to fail and everybody's running around about how, you know, we got to bail out the financial system. Banks around the world are just, you know, just saying, you know, forget everything else. We are, we got to be supported and your, your children's children's children are going to have to pay uh, taxes to support us. You know, and all that, and right at the midst of all that, this guy comes out and solves the double spending problem and solves the <laughs> solves pretty much erases the need for a, a third party in a transaction. Just crazy, crazy stuff. Not to mention the fact that Satoshi still has almost a million uh, uh, Bitcoin somewhere in the world. So it's a billion dollars. So who knows what happened to this guy? Who knows where he's at? But you know, I would think if, if he was a real person and he was just running aliases, that he would have, somebody would have claimed the, the, the million Bitcoin out there in the universe. 
because that's a lot of money just to say, um, you know, we're not going to do anything with it or I'm just going to let it go because I want to remain anonymous. I mean, that's, I don't think that's, that's what happened. It's a very interesting story. I'd like to know what happened. But anyway, Dan Larimer's talking to Satoshi clear back when, way, way, way back when. A guy that has that much, you know, background, that much history with uh, blockchain, that much uh, history with uh, cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. isn't going to waste his reputation by running something that uh, that isn't uh, isn't viable and doesn't have a very high chance of likelihood of uh, of working. So anyway, these people are real. I mean, this thing is real, and the, and the deal is real, and it's about ready to start start trading. It's about ready to start operating. The real world starting about about ready to hit us here real quick. So these are exciting times. This is a time to be involved. This is time to get involved. If you want to have your name on the Genesis block, if you want to have your name so you can get all the airdrops, if you want to be a part of something at the ground floor, man, this you got two weeks to do it. You got two weeks to buy in. So I think price is going higher. I think things are exciting, and I'm ready for liftoff. And it's going to, it's going to take place really fast. Yeah, we waited a long time for this. Um, another thing I want to talk about is I'm going to talk about something that we deal with, or most of us deal with on a daily basis. And I dealt with it today. And it's just a simple standing in line. Going to, I mean, I live in Southern California, very, very, very populated area. So most of the places you go, grocery stores, convenience stores, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV, you're gonna stand in line. You're just gonna stand in line. And that's typical of Southern California. But the idea of standing in line is just so outdated. It's just so, it's so, you know, archaic. It's just, it's just, I mean, when you stand in line, it's funny to see people stand in line because everybody tries to find a way to kind of, you know, preoccupy themselves why, because there's nothing to do. You stand in line, there's no place you can go. There's nothing, you're a captive audience. That's why they put those, those all that candy and all those, uh, those uh, items right there in front of you while you're standing in line at the aisle because you're a captive audience and you know they know you you, you know you're gonna maybe pick something up at the last moment but the idea of standing in line is very archaic and when you think about standing in line what is standing in line standing in line if you go to a grocery store and I got a train coming I'll try to make the video through the train but if you go to a grocery store or anything let's just say the DMV the Department of Motor Vehicles the only reason you're standing in line is because of verification third-party verification DMV has all the records you know so you got to go you got to go into a I'll let the train go by sometimes the trains are longer sometimes they're short, I hope they're short. But when trains go through this area this one's going to be a short chain probably the coaster there we go it's almost fast okay great so um, you know, you go to DMV, you get a number, you stand in line, it's a half a day gone, maybe a day if it's a busy day, and the only thing you're there for is third-party verification. you got to show up and identify yourself, and plus DMV's got all the records. So they know the history of your car, they know the history of your license, uh, they know, you know, if you've had any, um, you know, any tickets, or, you're, you know, you're good to go, or all that good stuff, but you got to go to DMV, because DMV is a centralized database there's a centralized location with all that information if that information was on the blockchain that information was public you and you had third-party verification and not only that you could pay for it online with some sort of a you know not MasterCard or Visa or doing something like that think of how much smoother our day would go how much smoother our lives would be how much how much time we would save on a daily basis by not having you know huge wasted days by going to places like the Department of Motor Vehicles and then also you know the, the, the verification at, a, at even like a grocery store uh, you're standing in line to buy your groceries or buy your your items and that's why I think Amazon's done so well because literally people are getting tired of going to places and standing in line so now with Amazon's quick shipping and prime and uh, the fact that you have about anything you can imagine for sale on Amazon, people are just skipping, you know, the department stores. They're skipping the grocery stores. They're going directly to Amazon, and you can see why. People do not want to waste days, time, hours, minutes, whatever, precious time, you know, standing in line. And it's all because of verification. It's all because when you go to a grocery store, 
you have to identify yourself with your customer number or your car. After that, you have to produce, um, if, you, if you buy an alcohol, you gotta produce an alcohol, you gotta produce identif identification. If, if you pay for it, now you gotta produce some sort of a payment um, uh, information. Uh, you gotta produce a bank card. You gotta make sure there's funds in the car, on the, on, in the account. So all this stuff has to take place because of verification. If verification can be put on a, a decentralized platform, a decentralized network, so verification could be made much easier. Uh, verification could be made in a matter of seconds with speed, with the scalability. There would be no need to stand in line anymore, which would be an enormous change for a lot of people. I mean, like I say, when you think about all the times you stand in line in your life, I mean, over the period of a lifetime, calculate the hours, the minutes, the seconds that you spend down in line waiting to buy something, waiting to do some transaction. That's an enormous time, and that's that's making our world a much more efficient place. Uh, eliminating a lot of waste, and that's what blockchain will do. So I like to think of blockchain as the big picture. I like to think of it as the things that can be done with blockchain. The enormous um, things that can be happen because we have this way of recording information that's trusted on the internet that anybody can see that has uh, that has time uh, stamps that uh, is transparent I mean this is amazing stuff our world is nothing but information everything we do is information every time we go to the grocery store we have to give information every time we go to the DMV we got to give information every place we got to go information 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 it causes it, it causes disruption and it causes uh, us to, it's a friction point in our lives. Every place we go, it's a friction point uh, because of the verification process. That can all be eliminated with blockchain. Um, and it will be, and it will be. There's no doubt about it in my mind. I mean, there's no doubt about how big blockchain will be. There's no doubt a, 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 to me how much the volume of content that will go on the blockchain. It'll be enormous. And to actually own a platform records all that information, to actually be one of the owners, to have voting rights on a platform like that, to actually participate in all this new technology and these new ideas and all this new stuff that's coming, that's going to be taking place very soon. It just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it just really, really, really doesn't. And uh, like I say, we got a you know, small, small period of time here before these, uh, these tokens aren't offered anymore. It's an amazing deal. It's an amazing idea. And it will change our world. It really will. I mean, the first time I heard that, I thought that was a... And I think the guy Oliver, I mean, John Oliver, didn't he make that... When uh, he did the, the hit piece on, uh, on uh, HBO, somebody said... He said, he says, this is going to change our world. And then he shows a picture of, like, a, of a lizard or something. And he goes, how's the lizard's life going to change because of blockchain? I mean, I thought that was really funny. I mean, I think it's funny because it just shows me kind of the level of understanding to somebody like a John Oliver. It shows me the level of understanding of people that just don't quite understand it. Uh, but they will. They will. Everybody will eventually understand it. It's, it's, gonna, it's not going away. It's not, it's not, it's not something that's temporary. It's, it's here to stay. You will understand it. You'll come around to it. And I got another train coming. So anyway, I've rambled on a little bit tonight. Uh, standing in the line is a big pain in the neck. And uh, blockchain can help uh, help uh, help with those kind of situations so anyway like I said the train is coming you hear it in the background be here in a moment so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off on this video and I'll talk to you tomorrow thanks